Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time, of course, for us to start a very important show right here. And today we got something super special for you. I am David Squeeze Anarchy, and this is a special edition of Cruising with the Case Handler. We will be doing in its entirety nothing but immigration. Ladies and gentlemen, right here on the show, right here on 93.5 WVIP FM, and also, of course, on Facebook. We must remind you, of course, that uh, this is brought to you by the law firm Pollock Pollock Isaac and DeSico, a firm that has multiple departments, multiple capacities. We focus on personal injury and immigration when we're um, doing this show, but they do have other uh, departments such as real estate, criminal defense, family law, and much more. Today's show is a special edition of Cruising with a Case Handler. We're calling it the Immigration Link. Is it near? I'm not right. <laughs> I'm not bright enough here on my screen. Let me just try to fix this right here, get some more light here. See that I'm the darkest one here on the, uh, on the show. You gotta make sure I'm a little bit brighter. See guys, I told you stop being a black man. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, we're here and um, we have attorneys that's right here with me. I mean, they all have nicknames, all right? So let me just run them down. But before we do that, I want to remind you all, it's now time to join us on Facebook if you'd like to place your questions on Facebook. Um, of course, my colleagues in the marketing department, you know, Tracy Spence and Alice and Alice Williams is actually uh, making sure they've got the WhatsApp group going so you can place your questions in that. But I swear to God, and I don't swear, I don't like swearing that much, that I do, ladies and gentlemen, have the best immigration attorneys here that I have ever spoken with in my life. And that's, and I say that without any apology, okay? It's the truth. And it's because I have people with such deep professionalism, people with so, so much depth, so much experience. I mean, people like the general, I mean, it, it's, it's unbelievable, you know? So I wanna welcome each and every one to the show, all right, right here on Cruising with the Case Handler, a special edition called the Immigration Link. I wanna welcome, uh, let's welcome Nelson Madrid, First, how you doing today, man? Good. I was uh, on a hiatus. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. What happened? What <laughs> happened to you yesterday? Busy. Just uh, well, actually, yesterday there was miscommunication. I was uh, under the impression that um, I, that the whole show would be dedicated to personal injury. I was obviously wrong, um, but I'm here today. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. I'm trying to get some light on my face here by closing the blinds. Okay, Conrad is laughing his asphalt off over there <laughs> at me. Well, that's okay. I'll get him back one of these days. Maybe this show. Uh, but anyway, Nelson, listen, thanks for being the maverick, man. And, and thanks for being so expeditious when dealing with the consultations. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the voice that you just heard is Nelson Madrick. We call him a maverick because he's so good at what it is that he does, man. I mean, hands down, is the greatest guy out there when it comes with immigration and dealing with you. In a, in a very blunt way. He doesn't beat around the bush, kiss around the edges for, I mean, I can use some other analogies. He's very straightforward. So anybody who wants a straight answer when it comes to immigration, you see the maverick at PPID. He will be very straight with you. No BS, no bull crap. He's gonna get straight to the point with you. So this way, you know, people come to people, um, Nelson, Conrad, and Alan, people come to the attorneys, and they expect the attorneys to give them the answer that they want. That's what they expect. You know, they, so when you don't give that answer that they want, some of them tend to want to go elsewhere. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no need. And that's the reason why PPID, Paula Pollock, Isaac, and Mystico will not take on a case unless that they know that they truly, truly can help you. So you call Nelson right now, especially if you have ever had a running with law and you're seeking immigration benefits or any, any reason for immigration at 844-774-3529. If you call now, you'll get a 100% free phone consultation. That's 844-774-3529. And of course, Nelson Madrid, the, the, the attorney that we call Maverick, loves working with this man that we call the general. That's Alan E.K. Now, I know he's got a lot to say, but I just want to introduce him. I want to introduce everyone, and then we'll get to him with the immigration update slash news. Now, Alan E.K., ladies and gentlemen, we joke about it all the time that he's got like 90 years of experience, but it's no joke. He has well over 60 years of experience in the capacity of immigration 
And he is one man that I've, I've never met anyone like him. He has this connection, okay, with people at the Department of Homeland Security at Immigration that he can email, reach out to communicate with. God forbid, something needs to be a little bit more expeditious. And Alan, how are you doing today, man? And welcome, Mr. General. I'm good, thank you. Okay, good to have you on the show again. I haven't seen your face in a while. How you been? In a week, yes. In a week, there you go. Well, it's good to have you back, man. Great, always great to have you on the show. You humble people like me when you speak, man. So I've got to just chill when you speak, you know? So I'm gonna let you speak in a few minutes though, but all is well otherwise, right? Everything is good. All right, great. All right, now, of course, the man who is the managing partner, the man at the helm, the man who, um, you know, make sure that he hires nothing but the best people, of course, when it comes to the attorneys and more at his firm, Conrad Pollock, we call him the maestro. You may have heard him opening up with the keyboards there. He's also a pianist. And I guess that's what they call it, right? A pianist, okay. How are you pianist, doing? Yes. Hello, I'm doing well. I wouldn't call myself a pianist just yet, but I do like to play. Okay, well, that's good. Man. We notice you're very fond of it. You know, welcome to the Immigration Link, Conrad. Okay, we've got all the entire show to speak on immigration. How are you doing? Anything you'd like to say before we have um, Alan E.K. speaks while the calls and the, and the, the questions coming to 844 um, uh, I'm good. You know, I find that um, having a hobby, like a musician, uh, like a musical instrument or, or gardening or doing a crossword puzzle or whatever tickles your fancy, you know, it takes your mind off of the daily... Uh, struggles and in my case takes my mind off of politics and all the crazy <laughs> stuff going on so it's a it's a good uh it's, i find it to be a very good escape plus they say learning a language i already know a language but learning a language learning a, a learning instrument doing a lot of mathematical equations helps to stave off dementia right alan absolutely <laughs> <laughs> so there you so, have it uh, so you know it's a good uh I, I've been playing now for, I don't know, about seven years, and um, I think it has staved off uh, early Alzheimer's on my part for the most part. Just kidding. Just kidding. I, I guess anyway, I to start uh, learning a language and, and start playing instruments. I mean, I keep, I keep you, keep your brain, uh, keeps your brain, fun brain functioning, you know, and, they, and there are studies really that, that do show that doing those types of things and really using your, using your brain and really does help to uh, keep you moving. And that's, you know, that's something I believe in. But anyway, as far as uh, the immigration frontier, um, we have some good news this week. I don't want to steal Alan's thunder. Uh, I'll let him get into the details. But uh, there were some federal court cases, one in particular that they issued a uh, temporary restraining order against the public charge rule, basically saying during the pandemic, Hey, uh, I'm sorry. I thought you no were going to steal Alan's thunder. Yeah, well, <laughs> but sure. you're stealing it. You. Thank you, but you're stealing it. Let's bring an Alan. Well, I'm just giving. I'm just giving the. I'm just giving the headline. Nothing more. Uh, the 944 form is still required, but uh, the public charge rule is on hold. And if Biden should win in November, it'll probably be on hold forever. So let's uh, let's everybody get out there and vote for uh, Joe Biden in November. But anyway, Alan, take it away. I don't want to say any more. OK, um, it's kind of interesting because I have a lot of stuff to do to talk about. And I wasn't sure we were going to devote the whole program to immigration. So it works out very nicely. And uh, Squeeze talked about uh, contacts in contacting the government. And as soon as we get off this call, I have to call JFK to talk to somebody at CBP, Customs and Border Protection, about a case that we're working on. So that's my next call after the program is over. Okay, let's talk about the court case. There are two nationwide injunctions that were issued by the federal court in New York. One of the injunctions stopped immigration from implementing their public charge rule. Uh, and that's the 944 form that has to go in uh, with your application, with many of your applications, including adjustment of status. The second nationwide injunction applied to the State Department because the State Department has its own public charge rules and you have to show uh, proof of health, private health insurance and public charge. And so that's going to be on hold also. So the good thing is that people going for 
interviews at American consulates, in the many cases, won't have to show health insurance, won't have to deal with public charge. And the same thing with immigration. Now, the only problem is this, that uh, some of my colleagues, when they saw this court case, uh, they were literally, uh, the paralegals were dancing in the aisles saying, oh, we don't have to do this public charge stuff. The only problem is that it's a district court case, federal district court. Immigration could be appealing it. It could go to the Supreme Court. So the question is, do we put in the 944 anyway? Uh, because who knows what's going to happen? If you're filing for adjustment of status, your interview won't be for a year, maybe. So it's a question that immigration lawyers are struggling with. Yes, the federal court has put a hold on it, but immigration may, may appeal, uh, may go to the Supreme Court. So that's one thing we have to decide what to do as lawyers. Should we do the 944 or not? And by the time you have an interview, it may have gone to the, to the Circuit Court of Appeals. It may have gone to the Supreme Court. So uh, Conrad and Nelson, what do you guys think about should we now in new cases be doing a 944 or not? Just wanted to get your opinion. Absol absolutely. I think you, you definitely have to file the I-944 um, because immigration is obviously kicking back applications or looking for any reason to kick back an application. Um, also, because there's a lawsuit, it doesn't necessarily mean it, it's going to prevail. So I believe you want to err on the side of caution and have everything ready. So, you know, obviously there's no delays with your case. Which is and that also... Also, this is the second, this, this TRO that was just issued by the court this week, uh, this is the second time this has happened. The uh, public charge rule was actually implemented last year, uh, in the last August, last September, I don't remember exactly. Uh, and then there was a federal court case, and there was a TRO that was issued, and then the Supreme Court reversed it, and the Supreme Court said that Trump could uh, implement the rule, and that's when it took, play, it took effect on February 24th. So this is the second time this exact same scenario is playing out. Uh, I think this one's going to carry carry more weight and last longer because the whole point of the, this, this court's decision this week was that how just needless and unwarranted and cruel uh, implementation of the public charge order uh, was during a pandemic. I mean, basically, the effect <laughs> can't make this stuff up, and it's just incredible. The effect of this public charge rule is to discourage immigrants from going and collecting insurance, paying for their medical bills, you know, any kind of government benefits that they might receive, including any kind of you know, hospital care, medical relief, uh, it, they, it can be used against them when they apply for the green card. So what ha what's the effect? Immigrants, obviously, were not going to get checked. They weren't getting tested. They were staying out of the hospitals. And the, I, I don't know if anyone's following, but the Hispanic population is about the hardest hit of all of our populations in terms of who's getting affected, who's being affected by COVID. So, you know, the, the public charge rule had the effect of discouraging the hardest hit community in our country from going and being tested and being checked and being treated. Made a lot of, makes a lot of sense as everything that the orange guy does. Um, so the court saw, re, saw, you know, with it, they actually made a very reasonable determination that this is probably not the best time to implement the public charge rule like this, which discourages people from going to the, going to the hospital and seeing a doctor. Yeah, wow. it's pretty, pretty logical uh, decision on my part, uh, in, in my opinion. But um, bottom line is, uh, I don't see that being overturned. Even if it does go to, it's going to be appealed. You know that uh, they, yeah. these guys, they don't, they don't care, you know, the effect. I mean, that's obvious from everything that they do. But uh, I think this time around, circuit court should affirm, and I think that the Supreme Court will back it up for as long as the COVID pandemic, as long as there's a national health warning out there, I think that the public charge rule will be stayed. But all of that said, you need to follow the 944. It's going to, especially if Trump wins, it's coming back no matter what. If Biden wins, as I said, you'll never see it again, I think. Uh, it'll be among, according to his plank, uh, and again, I, I, rec I suggest everybody out there was interested go and take a look at biden's uh, immigration policy just google Bi biden immigration and you'll see all the great things that he's planning on doing restoring order to the immigration system but um if biden becomes president this public charge rule will go away so one strong reason to vote against this guy all right let me jump in here and give out a phone number and also ask the people to do a few things for us once again folks 
If you're just joining us, this is a special edition of the Cruising with the Case Handler, Adam Handler, who is a top personal injury attorney here in the tri-state area. And remember, if you ever get hurt in an accident, you need to reach out to him. We call him the shark sometimes, we call him the case handler, and it's the same number, 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. However, I wanna take 30 seconds out to remind everyone that's listening to us on 93.5 FM to share the dial with someone else. Tell them, text them and let them know that we're on answering immigration questions, that's one. I want everyone that's on Facebook right now, please. We're asking each of you to share to at least 10 pages or more. In other words, 10 um, of your friends or people in groups, you know, join some groups and share the link that you're actually watching right now. All right. So once again, that is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. I do have a couple of questions for the attorneys today. All right. But we did not get to a lot of questions yesterday, you know, and I will be getting to, uh, I just want to ask one question and then we'll, um, we'll get into a special question that I have for the attorneys. But once again, folks, if you want a free phone consultation, everybody that's watching right now, as a matter of fact, before we even get to the questions, all right, everyone, everyone that wants to speak with the attorney for free, I mean, 100% free, you will not pay a dime. It's a phone consultation you must call before the top of the hour. Call right now. The number is 844-774-3529. You're guaranteed, ladies and gentlemen, you're guaranteed, okay, a consultation for free over the phone with one of the attorneys. The number, 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Call for that free phone consultation on immigration and even personal injury because we got the top man adam handler dealing with that so once again ladies and gentlemen make sure you reach out and of course speak with one of the attorneys now i just okay. want to give a ps remember we talked about this court case which is affecting the problem in homeland security but it also affects the american consulates so if you're going for an interview at an american consulate they're not going to be able to ask you about health insurance and public charge while this court case is in effect. Back to you, Squeeze. Thank you so much. And that's the general, folks. That's the man, probably the most knowledgeable um, immigration attorney in this hemisphere. Make no mistake, you should not go with any other firm. Make no mistake, after you get that free phone consultation, you should hire these attorneys. They're the best in the business. They can't say it because they're not allowed to, but I am saying it because I've seen what it is that they have done. Let's get to a, a quick question here. Uh, well, it's not so quick. Hi there, I am wondering if someone could please help me. I entered the USA at the end of February on a K-1 visa and married my partner within 90 days. I filed for my adjustment of status along with the other appropriate forms in June. Since then, I have heard nothing. The check has not been cashed. I finally got through to a representative today who has said that the application was denied, likely due to incorrect information. It was mentioned that I would be able to reapply I have read online that when I received this letter along with my package, I am eligible to be deported from the USA. I am wondering if anyone can shed some truth on that. Maverick. Yes. <laughs> um, I, I have to jump in there right quick because I got to take advantage of that opportunity I have. Um, <laughs> so basically what she should do is she should refile. He or she should immediately refile. Um, no, no, no. He or she should immediately contact PPID. At correct. Seven seven four three five two nine. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Thank you for uh, actually mentioning that. But um, it's very important to refile because if you don't refile, you can be served with a notice to appear and be referred to the immigration court. Um, they don't just deport you. They don't just show up at your house, pick you up, and put you on a plane. It doesn't work that way. Um, typically when a case is denied, you have 30 days to appeal. If you do not appeal within those 30 days, um, yes. Then, as I said, uh, moments ago, uh, the department of Homeland security can in fact issue a notice to appear, which basically commences removal proceedings against you. Um, the longer you wait, the more likely you are to receive that notice. Um, and there is a significant difference in price, uh, with, regards to legal representation. It's obviously a lot cheaper to have a lawyer help you with the process before you're in court than while you're in court. 
So give us a call, 844-774-3529. Once again, the phone number. Listen, people, I know I yell, scream, and shout, and I won't stop. This is the reason why you don't try and do your case yourself. Anything is possible. You have heard the Allens, the Conrads, and the Nelsons speak about this. Do not work on your case yourself. No matter what your friend tell you, no matter what your family member tell you, no matter what the guy down the corner on Flatbush said, okay, or the, the lady up on Gunnell Road, okay, no, 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 no. Call PPID. Get a free phone consultation and then hire them. Everyone that, that wants to speak with the attorney for free, call before the top of the hour. The number is 844-774-3529. Get that free phone consultation. Everyone is calling. You should call 844-774-3529 for that free phone consultation. Here's another quick one. Hello, all. Just need to know if all the documents are accepted by NBC and waiting for DQ. Can you travel to the USA on my current B1, B2? Wait a minute, say that again? Um, I pretty much is saying that it says, hello all, just need to know if all documents are accepted by NVC, I guess for evidently a case, and waiting for DQ, can one travel to the United States on their current B1, B2 visa? If they have a visa, I'm sorry, Alan, if they have a visa, yes. Uh, if they're asked at the airport, when they're entering, if they've ever applied for the green card or whatever, uh, they need to tell the truth and say yes. I don't know that they would actually know that, although if they check, they might be able to find it out. Uh, but just if you have a valid visa, yes. If you don't have a visa, I wouldn't go and apply for one because you will be denied if you've already applied for your green card. But if you already have a visa, even if you have a, have a green card application pending, again, as long as you tell the truth when they ask you, if they ask you when you enter the country, you can, you can use it, yes. Okay. And when you enter the country, the first person you see at the airport is called primary inspection. They only have a minute or two to talk to you. If anything sets them off or gets them nervous, they will send you to secondary inspection. Those people have a lot of time, could be hours where they ask you a lot of questions and, oh, you apply for an immigrant visa, why are you coming to visit? So as long as you understand the system, primary inspection, real quick, secondary inspection could take a long time. And if they're not happy at secondary inspection, they could uh, cancel your visa and throw you out. They could give you a chance to apply before an immigration judge, but that's the system that happens at the airport. You know, and, and also in secondary inspection, as Alan said, they have a lot more time on their hands. I mean, they could, keep, they could hold you for hours. I mean, I've, we've had, in fact, the person that Alan is calling about today to the JFK, uh, uh, to the port director today, this is a woman who was, when she came in with a tourist visa, they detained her for, I don't know, what was it, 30 hours, Alan? Yeah. Exactly. With her with her dog, with her dog. They kept her in a room for 30 hours and just basically tortured her until she finally agreed to sign whatever they wanted her to sign. Um, so uh, my advice in a situation like that, if you if you've got your green card application pending, unless you have a real emergency that you need to come to the United States, I wouldn't do it. It's risky. You know, it could affect you. It not only could it, they could turn you away, number one. They could, it could also affect your green card if they suspect that you committed some kind of fraud or you lied about something. Uh, if they catch you lying about something, it could affect you getting your green card and stop you and stop the case. So unless you have a real strong, urgent reason for coming to the U.S., I wouldn't. You know, and I just want to jump in there right quick. Um, you know, and I, I've mentioned this before on the show. I've heard of instances where the officer actually starts going through people's phones they okay. do it all the time and, now. And if yeah. you have something on your cell phone saying, you know, I can't wait to get there, you know, my job is waiting for me, I'm going to send yep. you some money back, you got problems. You know, so it's something people need to be aware about. Social media is fair game. Your cell phone is fair game. And these are all things that immigration now looks at. In fact, this case that we're talking about uh, where, where we're dealing with today, it's exactly what happened to this woman. They, they detained her. They didn't like what they, what they heard from her. And this is a woman who's just coming with a tourist visa. She's been here a couple of times. She's coming with a tourist visa. They didn't like what she said or how she was acting or she had her dog. Or maybe, they, maybe they weren't, the examiner wasn't an animal lover. Who knows? But they put her in a room. They took her phone, got her codes, went through her phone. And like I said, they detained this woman for 30 hours before sending her home. Not that only, happens. Not only the phone, they can go through your computer also. And if they find stuff on there, which happened in this case, you could be in uh, have trouble. Got, got you. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is Cruiser with a Case Adler, a special edition on immigration. Okay, we 
Still want to remind you that Adam Handler is, of course, around. Of course, he took the day off, so we're taking advantage of this um, show today with immigration questions that I have some questions for the attorneys also. And, of course, I'm quite sure you have questions for them. Remember to put your questions in the WhatsApp group or place it on Facebook. My page is David Squeeze Anarchy. You can place it on the Case Handler page or PPID's page. We'll get to the questions eventually. Um, once again, we will make sure all questions are answered today. And the number to call right now for anyone out there, maybe you just want to speak with your attorneys privately. Maybe you don't want to speak with them. Maybe you don't want to put your question on Facebook. Maybe you don't want to go through all of that. Maybe you just want to speak with them privately and then hire them. If you want that free phone consultation, dial this number. The number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Call that number and you will get to speak with one of the immigration attorneys, okay, over the phone, absolutely 100% free. Bring all your questions, okay? A lot of people have questions on the fiancé visa, the um, conditional green card. A lot of folks out there who have been arrested think that they have no recourse in getting citizenship or getting their green card. Hey, listen, if you have never spoken with an attorney at PPID, you owe it to yourself to actually speak with one of them absolutely free over the phone and then hire them if they can help you. It doesn't hurt to ask. Maybe you want a second opinion because you went somewhere else. I mean, I've heard Nelson and Conrad and Alan speak about cases of people who have gone elsewhere, they got screwed, or people who have gone elsewhere, they were told the wrong thing. And now they are at PPID and they've gotten through. So make that call. The number once again is 844-774. 3529. That is 844-774-3529. We're, we're going to be switching 100% to Facebook right now. So if you're out there and you're actually listening to us on 93.5 WVIP FM, now is the time to log into Facebook. Go to my page, David Squeeze Anarchy, or PPID's page, or the Case Handler page, and place your question there. Now, everyone that's actually on the page right now, you can do us a great favor you can compliment us by actually sharing the page. You can just click that uh, share button, okay, and share it on as many individuals' timelines as possible so that people can actually get help from these powerful immigration attorneys, people who have contacts with the Department of Homeland Security, people who are respected in, of course, the immigration community. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, they are here to help you. Call them now, 844 774 3529. That is 844-774-3529 for your free consultation. 844-PPID-LAW. It's nine o'clock. All right, gentlemen, as we continue here, we've got more questions. All right. So um, what I wanted to, um, Alan, I don't know if I had made you finish saying what it is that you were saying earlier with your update and your news. I know you were. I have a lot of updates, so you just cut me off when you sorry. want to take some more. <laughs> sorry, about that. I'm sorry about that. I wanted to get a few questions in there before we got off the physical radio itself. All right, sorry about that. So proceed. And then now, we, we are expecting a final rule from USCIS increasing their fees. That final rule should come out very soon. And we've been telling people listening to this program it's in your interest to try to file your immigration application sooner rather than later, because the filing, this final rule, when it goes into effect, will raise the fees you have to pay to the government for filing fees. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Next, um, U.S. consulates are very slowly now coming online on a case-by-case -case basis. So they're prioritizing family and U.S. citizen students and emergency travel appointments first. But if you have a case pending in an American consulate, uh, slowly, 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 they're coming alive. But those are the priorities, family of US citizens, students, and emergency travel appointments. OK, next, uh, we've seen a Supreme Court case recently dealing with DACA. And it, basically, the Supreme Court upheld DACA and we're wondering whether the Trump administration is gonna to try to go around that and try to knock DACA out. But in the meantime, it's possible to file new DACA cases. What they're gonna do with them, whether they'll process them or not,
uh, is another story. And lawyers, some lawyers are putting them in and some lawyers are holding off. But it is possible right now to file, a, if you've never filed for DACA, to file a new DACA case. Now, Nelson, can you have an opinion on that? You know, I, I'm not sure. I mean, typically one of the things I always do is um, I let my clients know, you know, look, if you file, there is a possibility it may not be adjudicated, um, but it's a risk that you take. I think there's a big difference between a client making a decision and an informed decision. I think you have to disclose basically what's happening, the climate, um, the risks involved. And I believe that allows the client to make an informed decision, which is obviously knowing that he can file this and there is a possibility he just may never get a decision on it. There is also the possibility it may be adjudicated, right? We're in an election year. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, but if he does file, and even if it's pending, and there's a new administration that comes into office, it will obviously be adjudicated. Um, and if he waits and does nothing, then obviously time continues to pass, and he's at a standstill. Okay. Uh, squeeze, I have another one to go through. Um, we've been talking about card production. And there's been delayed production of your employment authorization cards and your green cards. And so right now there are 50,000. No, no benga, no benga, no benga. And right now there are 50,000 green card applications pending, 75,000 applications for employment authorization pending, which haven't been printed yet. And the reason for that is there were these applications, these cards were being done by two facilities, one in Kentucky and one in Missouri. For whatever reason, the USCIS ended the contract with the Kentucky facility, which was producing cards. So now all they have now is the one in Missouri, and now there are massive delays in getting your green cards. So uh, if you really need it and want it, there are ways of doing it, including going to court and filing a mandamus and Nelson will tell you about a mandamus, but that will force them to get produce your card instead of sitting around. And also, right. you can, theoretically, you can go to your congressman. But basically, there is a delay in card production. Nelson. A mandamus is basically a federal lawsuit, and we've discussed this previously, um, where you sue the government and compel them or force them to take action on your case. Um, we've been very successful in the past and typically that definitely expedites the process and expedites whatever it is you're trying to achieve. It's a federal lawsuit. You're going to federal court. Uh, immigration is not going to appear before a judge and basically say, you know, oh yeah, we've been sitting on it for three years and we're just not going to adjudicate it. Um, so typically what they try to do is they try to settle. They try to settle this as soon as possible to make it go away. And that's one of the reasons why it's so successful. Of course, it costs money, but it produces results. And That's we'd be happy to do a mandamus in your case. Come and see us. Okay, there you have it. Um, is that it, uh, Alan? I don't want to interrupt you or cut you off again, you know. <laughs> one more, one more. We've been talking about <laughs> furloughs. Furloughs are where you stop working. Uh, you're not fired, you're just put on the shelf. So the Immigration Service had served a notice that they were going to be furloughing 13,000 workers starting in August, August in the beginning of August. That's now been extended. So the furloughs won't take effect until August 31st if there's going to be a furlough. Now, if there is a furlough, we'll bring the entire US immigration system to a grinding halt. Uh, for each month, there is a furlough, 75 applica 75,000 applications for benefits will not be processed. If you are a permanent resident and you're in the process of applying for naturalization, this is gonna hold up your case and you won't be able to naturalize and register to vote in the coming election. So furlough, this is a big thing. Immigration, USCIS has asked for $1.2 billion from Congress to help them out, whether they get it or not is another story. Even if they get it, they still may decide to do the furlough. So we're keeping a very close eye on furloughs and if it takes effect, it's been put off till August 31st and we'll keep talking about it, but it's a serious thing 
if, if they go through with their furloughs. Okay, thank you. There you go. And that's the general, Alan E. Kay, super attorney, super immigration attorney at the firm, ladies and gentlemen. So make sure you reach out to him. He's actually here to help each and every one out there. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is Cruising with the Case Handler, a special edition. We call it the Immigration Link. And right now, everyone that's watching us, listening to us, dial this number and you will get a 100% free phone consultation on immigration, regardless of where you are. The number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Make that link now, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, they are ready to help you. 844-774-3529. Uh, I'm gonna ask one question from someone that's um, watching us now, and then I have a question for you guys also. Um, uh, greetings, everyone. I wanted to know if same-sex marriage, GC process, is any different than normal marriage. My boyfriend is U.S. citizen, and we're planning to marry somewhere outside and apply for my green card. Would I have any hiccups for application? I heard that USCIS would, could reject the application if they want to. Is that correct? Any feedback is appreciated. It's the same process, whether it's hetero or homosexual, uh, it's the same exact process. Uh, but our experience, and we have a lot of experience in this area since uh, the law has changed a few years back, uh, immigration tends to be, most of the examiners there tend to be on the conservative side, uh, which is probably no surprise. Um, and as a result, frequently these types of cases are scrutinized more thoroughly. Uh, they ask for a lot more documentation. They ask for a lot more evidence to prove that it's a legitimate marriage, to prove that it's a legitimate relationship. Um, so, uh, but the process itself is is identical. Uh, just be prepared to submit a lot more documentation to be able to prove that it's a valid relationship. That's the key. You know, Squeeze, if I could jump in for a second. Um, based on our experience as well, many people who have tried this on their own frequently come to us before the process is over because they realize how difficult it is. And, you know, people speak and you speak to a heterosexual couple and you realize that they're asking you a lot more questions. They're requiring a lot more evidence from you than they did from your heterosexual couple. Um, mm -hmm. Also, our clients who have gone to an initial interview on their own feel that the interview is overly intrusive, you know, and that's one of the reasons why it's, in my opinion, imperative uh, to have an attorney with you because, you know, I've been to easily at least two or 300 interviews. I know what they should and what they should not ask. Um, when you go by yourself, you're really at the mercy of the officer. And as Conrad said, if you have a conservative officer, good luck. You know, I mean, we represented a couple, uh, a homosexual couple, same-sex marriage, um, where they delayed the case for about three or four years, simply because they had gone on their own and uh, the immigration officer asked who made the wedding arrangements and one person said I did and the other person didn't have an understanding of everything that was involved. And because of that, they, they, they started questioning the marriage, which is ridiculous because in every relationship, there's one person. I mean, I can't even tell you how much money we made last year. My wife handles that. I, I'm not involved in that, you right. know, but they, in my opinion, they hold them to a higher standard, a different standard. So it's something you want to be careful about. Gotcha. But interestingly, uh, we have a case now, same-sex marriage went through very nicely. He got his green card. We're waiting for him to be sworn in as a citizen now. So that was a smooth case. And so some of the cases are problem cases and some they look closely, but they, are, can, they can be and are being approved. Well, Alan, I think, I think you said the, the key there, we have, it's someone who hired a lawyer and had a lawyer for the entire process. Yeah, it's a big I, difference. Yeah, we have to keep the ID. That's right. That's what it needs to be. So once again, cases like these, this is the reason why we say call PPID. You don't want to do this by yourself, all right? Call them at 844-774-3529. Get that free phone consultation or just call them and hire them, all right? 844-774-3529. I'm going to follow up with you, um, Nelson, because it's the Maverick moment now, all right? 
Okay, so uh, the Maverick moment brings about a question that I have here, you know, which has popped up occasionally in the past, but not enough. All right, so I want to know more about it. Um, what is a special immigrant ju juvenile status and who's eligible? And what is the process? How long does it, what benefit does it confer? Can the child then get help? Uh, his or her parents, could this adversely affect the non-custodial parents? I've heard about this juvenile status situation and I wanted to know more about it. I'm quite sure the viewers who are now sharing on Facebook to others want to hear more about it. Sure, so special immigrant juvenile status allows anyone under the age of 21 who is living in the United States and is not married, um, they may be eligible for a green card, okay? Now, it's a process, all right? By green card, I mean lawful permanent resident status. Uh, typically, the first part of that process is obtaining a valid juvenile court order issued by a state court, which finds you are dependent on the court in the custody of a state agent agency, I'm sorry, um, or that basically a family member. Typically in New York, if you're under the age of 18, I believe, that family member can get custody. If you're over 18, it's called guardianship. Um, in family court, you have to demonstrate that you cannot be un reunified with one or both of your parents because of abandonment, abuse, neglect, or a similar basis under the state law, and that it's not in your best interest to go back home, right? So let me give you a fact pattern just to clarify all of that. Um, you are under the age of 21. You're living in the United States with your mother. Your father had, um, had a drinking problem. He lives back home. He's never been a part of your life. Um, you're here, you have no status. If your mother gets custody from a state court and you can demonstrate that, again, you cannot be reunified with your father because of abuse, abandonment or neglect or a similar state basis, you would ask the court to issue what's called a special findings order. Once that special findings order has been issued, uh, you can then file an application with immigration that would give you lawful permanent resident status. Um, typically the whole process, depending on where you're from, uh, people from Central America, the process takes a little longer, um, but typically you're looking at about a year, a year and a half, and then you are able to get your green card excuse me, the question a lot of people ask is, okay, so if my mother gets full custody of me, how does that affect my father? You know, will my father ever be able to get a green card in the future? Um, yes, but not through you. You know, the fact that a court made a finding that you were abused, abandoned, or neglected should have no implications on your father's case if hypothetically your father were to come to the United States and marry a United States citizen and apply for adjustment. It, it's two completely separate cases and that should not affect you. But it's definitely a great tool for children under the age of 21 to legalize their status in the United States. And the key is filing that first application before you turn 21. So if you're 20 years old and you submit the application and hypothetically, for whatever reason, the application is pending for two years and now you're 22, you're still eligible for a green card because you filed that first application with immigration before you turn 21. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, but here's the part that, that I wanna ask you. Uh, what's the difference between that child um, being SIG versus DACA? SIG confers lawful permanent resident status. DACA does not. Gotcha. So, so that child who obtained SIG is, again, a lawful permanent resident, can apply for citizenship after five years. DACA is simply a work permit that confers no legal status. It only allows you to remain and work in the United States. Gotcha. Well said. Well put. Thanks for clearing that up for me personally. All right. And I'm quite sure a lot of people are um, very happy with you answering that. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is Cruising with the Case Handler, a special edition on immigration. We call it the Immigration Link. Um, I need for everyone out there to understand that you can actually call the firm now, set up a free phone consultation with one of the attorneys, whether that is Alan Kay, 
Conrad Pollux or the Nelson Madrid, known as the Maverick that you just heard from, dial this number, 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. You know, Make Squeeze, and, yeah. and I'm sorry to interject, um, the Sige is, is amazing, especially for single parents who are here with children. You know, we have represented many children whose parents say, listen, as long as my child can legalize his status and secure his place in the United States, help him. You know, yeah. and it's an amazing opportunity. Once the child turns 21, they are no longer eligible. So it's important to act fast. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well said. Well put. That's the Maverick moment, ladies and gentlemen, right here on the special edition of Cruiser with a Case Handler, the immigration link. We've got the Conrad Pollux on board, the Nelson Madrids, and of course, the general himself, Alan E.K., top attorneys, of course, here in the um, United States, currently of the Orange Man. All right. Just wanted to say that to Joe, to uh, Conrad for a little bit there. United States of America, of course, you know. Um, here's another, another quick question. Um, quick, um, it's not so quick either. Another immigration question. My question is in relation to the consular interview that is done in the final stage of the IR1 process. My husband and I received a letter from NBC stating that they received all the required forms and payments required prior to attending an immigrant visa interview. And it would be working with the US Embassy in my country to schedule our interview. This was back in March before COVID-19 pandemic began to get very serious. My question is, even though they have said they would schedule the interview, the U.S. Embassy in my country has an online interview scheduling portal that you can register on to schedule an interview. Should I do this or should I wait for it to be scheduled by the NBC? You should be using PPID. But anyway, go ahead. An online interview, that's unusual. I've never seen that before, and I'd be very uh, leery and careful about that. Um, you want to really try to push the consulate and find out what's holding up the case. What about an in-person interview? Where is the person who need, wants the visa? Are they back home in the home country just waiting for the interview? So we need, need some more, more information. I've never seen an online interview for a marriage case either here or at a consulate. So I'd like to have more information about that. I'd like to see the notice for scheduling an online interview. We're doing the case, we would probably get in touch with the consulate and ask him some more questions. There you go. And that's the general speaking there. Once again, very, very super knowledgeable individual, um, immigration attorney, I should say, at PPID, Paula Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico. Remember to call the number 844-774-3529 or visit them at, the, um, at ppid.com. Also, do remember the case handler, the shark, the personal injury, the top man, the most celebrated of course, personal injury attorney within the Caribbean community on 93.5 FM and beyond. If you ever get hurt in an accident, you only need to call that man at the firm PPID. He's a partner there. Call him at the same number that we've been giving you, 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Um, this is the final question I have here. Um, it says, uh, this one is for you, Conrad. Um, in my I-864, the beneficiary included my income, enough to meet the requirement, and my assets, three times income requirement, spouse is U.S. citizen and doesn't work. If I lose my income, do I have to notify USCIS or will my asset will, rec will cover the income requirement anyways and I don't have to do anything? That's verbatim. You want me to read again? No, I got it. I, 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 Connery, I, I, you're on mute. You're on mute. We have to see the numbers first to see what the assets are, what the income is. Uh, and again, as we talked before, you may have to be doing a 944 also if the case is being done in the United States. Um, so without really looking at the numbers and what are your assets, and uh, it doesn't even matter about the income, we just want to give you a good, complete answer. You know, typically the income of the 
beneficiary, the alien who's applying for the green card, is a lot less significant than the income of the person who's sponsoring that person. So in this case, if it's the U.S. citizen who's not working and it's the applicant who is, that's not good. All right. They don't really care about the applicant. Uh, I mean, I shouldn't say they don't care. I mean, it's important, but it's less significant in terms of what the applicant is earning, what kind of job they have than the person who's sponsoring the U.S. citizen. That person's income is really what's important. And in this case, if the citizen spouse is not working, they've got a problem. All right. They're going to need a joint sponsor. They're going to need a lot more than what they it's what they apparently have right now. So, again, this is a situation where you need a lawyer. I mean, you're going to do this yourself. Yeah, you might get through eventually in a year or two or three, you know, but uh, it, it's just it's a, a mistake doing trying to do that kind of thing on your own. You know, and just to add, Conrad, you know, especially if the case is taking longer, they can issue a request for evidence, ask you for updated financial documents. And now you got a problem. You know, so it's just something to keep in mind. Yeah, and then again, after this is all done, when your interview is scheduled, this will come up at the interview also. If you're in the United States or waiting for an interview at USCIS, and if they will ask these questions again. There so it's best to have a lawyer look at your case and get it all together so that when you have the interview, you, you can show them that you were not going to be a public charge. You know, Squeeze, knowing what I know now, I got to be brutally honest with you. If uh -huh. I were here illegally, or if I were married to someone who had no status, I would never, trust me, I mean, not just what I've seen, it's what I've heard from my clients. I would never try this on my own. I mean, it's just ridiculous. You know, as I've said many times, you're rolling the dice. Yes, some people are fortunate. And again, many of the callers, many of the listeners, many, you know, they've told us their story. And they come to us because they started the case on their own and all of a sudden they hit a wall and they're stuck, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's something to keep in mind. It's a minefield as Conrad is um, demonstrating kind of right there, you know, with that picture. It is a minefield. Immigration is a minefield. And with that said, ladies and gentlemen, I am proud that I've given you the best attorneys in the capacity of immigration and personal injury. So right now, before we conclude, I'd like to give out the number a few times, every single one of you, wherever you are in the world, I need for you to call the number because immigration is federal. As long as it has to do with US immigration, you will be able to get a free phone consultation with an attorney at Paula Pollock, Isaac and DeSico. Prior results do not guarantee similar outcome. And yes, it's an attorney advertisement. But as you can see, they're more passionate about helping people. What you can do is get that free phone consultation and then hire them. 844 774-3529. That is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Make the call because immigration is truly a minefield. And I personally believe, and I'm disclaiming it, that a lot of the things that they put you through is just entrapment so you can get in trouble so that you get deported or you just don't get your status sorted out. And that's the reason why I say go with the attorneys at PPID, 844-774-3529. General Alan E.K. Esquire, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Esquire, thank you so much for being on the show. Conrad, the maestro Pollock, Esquire, managing a partner at the firm, thank you so much for being on the show. And Conrad, Seeing that you were commenting on an orange guy wearing an orange shirt today. Yeah, un unintentional. Wasn't uh, strictly, strictly a coincidence. I just happen to look good in orange. I like to top it off. He's uh, modest. Uh, at least he's at it. But a final minute as to anything you'd like to say to our viewers and listeners. Don't do this stuff yourself. You know, it might seem simple or your next door neighbor might have done it a couple of years ago or your friends are saying, ah, you don't need a lawyer. Why are you going to spend the money? You know, <laughs> just we can't begin to tell you how many stories we've heard like that and how many clients have come to us after they tried to do it themselves to, and come to us to try to help them dig out of a hole that they created for themselves. It's just it's not worth it. You know, I mean, it's besides the money. The aggravation and, and, and the the 
Sleep nerves that, and the sleepless yeah. nights and just as Nelson said you know I've been doing this for 30 something years and you know I'm, I'm not doing it for 50 like Alan but just it, it, there are so many things that go wrong that we've seen and it, it happens and it's happening more now than ever before the administration this administration look I've, I've been saying all along immigration is not your friend they never have been but man <laughs> these days they are not your friend if ever I mean previous 10 years ago, they were like your best friends compared to what they are today. I mean, they are not looking to help you. They are looking to screw you. They are looking to deny your case, and they are looking to get you out of here any way, shape, or form. Get you out. Turn you down. Say no. Goodbye. Go back to your country. That's the attitude right now. So trying to navigate the system yourself is a major mistake. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of people are going to do it anyway, and then they're going to, they're going to think back and they say, I mean, that guy wearing that orange T-shirt that day, he was telling us, you know, not to do it ourselves, and he was right. And then they'll call us, hopefully. And, oh, and Conrad, I'm and sorry. When you come to see us after the case is in pro problem, the lawyer's fee is going to be a lot more. Well, right. just, just look, Squeeze, before we go. Just yesterday, we actually appeared via Zoom in district court in Louisiana. Okay, there was a gentleman that was on an order of supervision for 10 years, had a lawyer who did absolutely nothing. Guess what happened? I showed up at his house, detained him. He is now in custody and they are trying to deport him. Okay. And this was somebody who had a lawyer, quote unquote, a lawyer. Okay. Because how you represent someone for 10 years and don't do anything. Okay. Is beyond me, but that is our client's current situation. And you know, again, yesterday, one of our attorneys uh, argued before a district court judge in Louisiana, basically in an attempt to keep our client here. You know, so even if you do have a lawyer, get a second opinion. You know, not every lawyer is necessarily competent. Not every lawyer, you know, there's some lawyers that pretend to, to know immigration law, family law, criminal law, you know, personal injury. One lawyer doing five different areas of law. It's impossible. You know, we have departments at our firm that specifically practice in specific areas. Um, I think we're very knowledgeable. I, I should hope we're very knowledgeable, right? Um, but give us a call, 844-774-3529. And the case that Nelson is talking about was written up in Long Island Newsday uh, about a week ago. It's a really interesting story. It's got 10,000 hits to the story already. And it's on our Facebook page, by the way. It is linked. There is a link to our, on our Facebook page. Great. Once again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for sharing and watching our show. Do remember this is called Cruising with a Case Handler. Today's show is a special edition. I'm focusing on immigration, but the law firm is a full service law firm in the area, yes, of immigration, personal injury, family law, real estate law, criminal defense, and much more. Uh, dial the number, let it ring 15, 20 seconds, store the number. The number is 844 774 35 Two nine. That's eight four four seven seven four three five two nine. Make that link. Make that call. Make that connection. You can catch cruising with a case handler in New York on ninety three point five WVIP FM. Also eight thirty AM weekdays and Saturdays at seven PM and Sundays at twelve noon. Tomorrow I will be calling Nelson Madrid. I don't care if he's in the pool. I don't care where he is in the mountains. I am finding him. I am bringing him on. Tomorrow, Saturday at 7.03 p.m. Okay, not a second earlier, not a second later. You and I, we're going to chit-chat a little bit, um, if you don't mind, Mr. Badger. Tell your yeah. wife, you know, everything is okay. Sounds good. Listen, last question before we go. You down with PPID? Come on. <laughs> you <know> me. <laughs> I love that part. <laughs> well, you all weren't going to ask that today. <laughs> Anyway, have yourself an amazing weekend, everyone, watching this and um, attorneys. Thank you so much for doing the show. Looking forward to talking with you tomorrow and else then continuing Sunday and Monday. It's been a great show. Really do appreciate it. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right, guys.